Maruchan superfans are everywhere. From the busy moms who want to deliver maximum flavor in a flash to dorm room diners who want to put some slurp in their step. There are a ton of copycats you could use, but if you want to bless your bowl, there's only one true Maruchan. Whether you choose instant lunch, ramen bowls, yakisoba, or restaurant quality gold, Maruchan is the only ramen worth obsessing over. Smiles for all, Maruchan. See what all the ramen hype is about at maruchan.com. Vaginas are absolute magic. And Ali is here to give them the respect they deserve. That means shame-free supplements made with clinically studied ingredients to keep your pH in check and your pleasure a priority. Put yourself on top. Go to Ollie.com today. These statements have not been evaluated by the Food and Drug Administration. This product is not intended to diagnose, treat, cure, or prevent any disease. Hey, hey, you are listening to the OCAP Potty Training Podcast. I am your host, Jamie Glowacki, and I am the author of Oh Crap Potty Training and Oh Crap, I Have a Toddler. So today, I would like to dive into some troubles I'm seeing parents have in my private work and stuff I see on social media. The first thing that I want to bring up is consequences. Escalating consequences and escalating rewards is the flip side of that. Now, when our child is struggling with potty training, we can get into rewards and consequences. But one thing I want to bring up before even that is when to determine your child is struggling. So we have a remarkable low distress tolerance right now in the parenting world. So if something seems hard, I see a lot of parents go, oh, okay, no, never mind, not doing it. If potty training seems like work, oh, he's not ready. That's not true in most cases, yeah? In most cases, it's a glitch, it's a learning process, and it may be a struggle. But early on, it's just data. It's just information and your child is still learning. So I see a very common thing. I'll often get an email or a message on Instagram that says, I'm four hours into potty training and I have had it. If four hours of teaching your child something makes you go over the edge, then you have to build up your distress tolerance. Yes, nobody learns anything in four hours, let alone a humongous developmental milestone that is taking something the child has known and loved for their entire life and transitioning to a new thing. That is not on the child. And I have rarely seen such utter disasters in the first four hours that you would be completely done. So that's one thing is please determine that your child is actually struggling and not still learning. And that takes some time, right? Like we have to give kids three to seven days at least to start to get acclimated to potty training. I can't believe this milestone is rushed so much. Like, okay, yeah, three days and they should be done. Like, when have you ever learned anything significant in three days? That's crazy. But what happens is when we do, whether we're in that moment of we have no distress tolerance, so if we're four or six hours in and we're like, okay, nothing, this isn't working. I need another, I need another system, right? Which again, I wouldn't say you need another system, even if you're not using my system. You don't need another system. You need to give your child some time. Right. So one thing we'll do also when a child is struggling is we'll start to do rewards and or consequences. So escalating rewards and consequences just mean they have to bump up. Right. And I see this a lot with rewards, which is, again, why I am against them, because I've mentioned this in many podcasts. The detriment I see to rewards that go sour are far worse than just trying to potty train without rewards. So unfortunately, consequences and rewards have to amp up in in order to be effective, right? So it's just the nature of the beast. If you're going to give me one M&M for peeing, I'm going to try to work the system to get five M&Ms because that's how my toddler brain works and I want the M&M, right? Consequences maybe don't have to bump up to be effective, but we amp them up till we're saying ridiculous things. The two number one things I hear both for rewards and consequences is offering a trip to Disney, for a singular pee or poop in the potty and or taking away a trip to Disney for an accident or a child who's not releasing. And that can often happen too in like quote unquote bad behavior moments, right? Where you're not coming to Disney with us. Like that is such nonsense, you guys. Don't start throwing out consequences that aren't gonna happen. There is no way in hell you're leaving your three-year-old behind if you have a Disney trip plan. So don't say that, you know, that's akin to like, I'm calling Santa. Like, we don't, we don't do that, okay? 
So bear in mind, if you're going to give a consequence for some aspect of potty training, it needs to be fast and immediate. But let's talk about that because behavior is communication. The only reason you would potentially give a consequence is for some sort of misbehavior within potty training. But this gets tricky, you guys, because behavior is communication. So we want to exhaust the fact that you might be doing something wrong and your child is having a behavioral reaction to it, or you may be pressuring and your child's having a behavioral reaction to it. And in those cases, a consequence isn't really appropriate. Now, if your child is blatantly disobeying, disrespecting, something like that, and you need to give a consequence, if your child is angry at you and throws the insert full of pee at your head, that is behavior somewhat connected to potty training. But very rarely, in those first few weeks especially, is behavior appropriate for consequences. So for an example, number one, you would never reward or give consequences to a child who is withholding pee or poop. That is a muscular reaction to anxiety. With the poop, you can get my pooping solutions course. With the pee, you 100% need a call consult. Those are not behavior. They can look like behavior. It looks like your child's doing it on purpose. It can feel manipulative. It is not. It's a muscular reaction to anxiety. Consequences are not appropriate in that setting. If your child screams when you prompt them, if your child refuses to sit, those are a communication. Yes, that is not ideal to give a consequence because the child is actually trying to tell you something, which is, I'm freaked out. I need some comfort. You're putting too much pressure on me. Back off. They don't have these words. So they act out, right? And acting out gets a really bad rap in child. Oh, they're acting out. Yeah, because they don't have the words. So they're acting out whatever's happening internally. I would say 90% of the time, it is too much pressure from the parent. And I don't know why, but after like three days or maybe even two days or four days of potty training, we expect this child to have it down. So we get very short. It's like, oh my God, sit on the potty. You have to pee. Yes, that makes logical sense. We can see that they need to pee. We can see that they need to sit down and release. But for some reason, they're not. Yes? And I don't think that's always a kid digging in their heels. There are kids who are digging in their heels. There are kids who might be manipulative. There are kids who are trying to maybe get their way. What is their way in potty chain? They want the thing they know and love since birth, and that's a diaper. Is that understandable? Would we give them a consequence if they wanted their binky and we were trying to change that behavior? We would probably give them some compassion and empathy, right? It's like, yes, I know. So lean into compassion and empathy before you run into a consequence, okay? I trust parents to know their kids. And there are kids. I say this all the time. There are kids who come out of the womb with boxing gloves on. I don't know why. They're just contrary. Everything is no. You're going to have that same kid potty training. So if you're used to like giving sort of consequences for what your child may or may not be doing, that's cool. But if your kid isn't that type of kid, right, and they're having this behavior in potty training, lean into what you think they might be trying to communicate to you. And offer compassion and empathy before lowering the boom. Now, rewards are really slick because a lot of parents don't like to give a, a consequence and they know that. They know it's potty training. They know, you know, a consequence isn't appropriate here. So they try to do the sneaky thing, which is the flip side, which is rewards, right? Trying to bribe, trying to reward. Rewards can have their place as a tool if we're confused about whether or not the child is capable, which I would argue almost every child is. But if you have to keep bumping it up, it's not working. If you have to keep offering more, it's not working. So ditch it. Your child isn't motivated by an external reward system. So I would just eliminate them completely. It is a sneaky thing because it can feel like, oh, it's positive reinforcement. Oh, my neighbor did it with m and So it feels like it's an okay thing to do. But be cautious with rewards because, again, they almost always start to amp up and then you find yourself offering a $10,000 Disney trip for a singular poop in the potty. And again, withholding is not behavior. It's behavior in the sense that it's anxiety, but that's not like a manipulative behavior that needs a consequence, okay? This is such a sticky ground because even manipulative behavior is what we all do. We're all manipulating 
people at all times. It's just that adults, we get very skillful and we're nice, right? Like when you go in, I mean, I'm a nice person. I like to like say hi to all the checkout people and talk, right? But it's a subtle manipulation of like, hey, like me. Hey, I'm a nice person. I'm not going to be a dick. I just want to make your day a little brighter, right? So a lot of times we're manipulating for good, but we are manipulating. So when a child, when you feel like you're being manipulated, again, first line of defense is always lean into what is the communication behind that, okay? Let's dip really briefly, not really briefly, let's spend the rest of the podcast (laughs) talking about daycare. Daycare problems are coming out of the wazoo. So let's do a few like bottom rung, first level fixes and what would I do first? Before I get into daycare, if you have determined that your child needs a reset, please do a full reset. What I'm hearing a lot lately is a half-assed reset. And what I'm hearing a lot of lately is the child was potty trained. The child did great for months. Like I heard from a family three months, I heard from another family five months, and then something happened, something at daycare, the child started having accidents. And the parent said, I guess they're not ready and started to do a reset. And in more than one case, I've heard of parents doing a sort of half-assed reset, which is like keeping the potty out, letting the child go sometimes, but mostly having a diaper on. That is sending such a mixed message, particularly after your child has done well with potty training for anywhere over six to eight weeks, okay? You can't just drop a skill. And the idea that they potty trained really well for a few months and now all of a sudden they're not ready is ludicrous. I don't know why parents are so easily like, oh, they're not ready when they were doing well. Clearly something went wrong. It's our job to try to figure out what went wrong. Was there a flushing toilet? Was there a automatic flushers? You know, did your child fall in a potty? That can totally put a bump in the road. Is your child teething? There are so many things of why a child would suddenly start having accidents, but them not being ready after doing it okay for months is not one of the reasons. So then if you determine that your child needs a reset, that's your call, but put a diaper on, put the potty away. You cannot do like this half-ass, you can't go from potty training to like, oh, okay, you can wear a diaper sometimes. Like you've not only gone backwards, you've gone more than backwards. You've now added so much trouble to the process. So don't do that. I do have a podcast all about resets. Do the reset the proper way because you're just going to extend this into a disaster. Don't do that, okay? And if your child has been successful, don't take it out from under them. Just try to figure out what went wrong because something went wrong or the child is physically going through something. Perhaps they haven't pooped in a long time. Perhaps they're teething. Perhaps, you know, it was the time change. Time changes always mess us up, right? But on that, let's talk about daycare. So first and foremost, if you are listening to this, we will get to if you're already in daycare and struggling. But the biggest thing I can say is get information before you potty train. That is key. Get our daycare blueprint. It's a course available. Half of it is how to prepare yourself, the school, the child for transitioning to daycare. And half of it is all the troubleshooting that can go on. And there is a myriad of things that can go wrong. Number one, remember potty training is not a transferable skill. So they may, they, it may be a bumpy road going back to daycare, but you must find out policies and bathroom stuff before you begin. So again, if you didn't do that, don't worry, we'll hit, we'll hit you up in a second. But if you are listening to this and you anticipate a daycare transition, seriously, get the daycare blueprint, but also meet with your provider. Do not accept the answer. We'll do whatever you want us to do. That is a lie in 90% of the cases. I know I keep throwing out 90%, but in uh, so many cases, that is a lie. It turns out that they actually have very firm beliefs. They have very firm protocols and they're just not letting you know. If your child is under 24 months and your child has to be in full-time daycare, I do not recommend potty training. I really don't. Most daycares are not supportive. If you find out that your daycare, for whatever reason, they're Montessori, they're small ratio, they are super supportive, awesome. But again, do a little bit more digging. What does that mean? Do you take the children together? Do you expect self-initiation? I only have five days to potty train at home. My child is not going to be self-initiating right away. Are you, are you able to prompt every hour? What's the bathroom situation? Is it open stall? Is it closed stall? Can you take pictures of it to show your child when you're potty training at home? 
Do they allow a small potty? Do they allow an insert in the toilet? Do they have a step stool? Is it under lock and key? Can the child go to the bathroom by themselves? These are all things you need to know so you can prepare your child as you're potty training. But also, this is going to give you an idea of what could be going wrong. If they have an open floor plan, which a lot of preschools do, and daycare is like, a lot of times it's little toilets, kind of in the middle of the room with a wall that you can an adult can easily see over, but it's not private at all. If you are potty training your kid and your kid right from the get-go expresses a need for privacy, they're going to have a hard time with that. That's information you can give the teacher and say, he's going to need a little privacy. If your child is nervous and doesn't like privacy and they have stalls with bathroom doors that close, okay, you might want to, can you just keep an eye on her and leave the door open? She's a little freaked out, that kind of thing. If they have a lock and key situation down the hall with a full-size toilet and they don't allow a potty, you are in big trouble. Like that is not conducive to a, a little one potty training. So again, maybe wait, maybe wait till your situation can change. Maybe wait till the potty training room opens up. A lot of this just depends on what kind of daycare you have. So first and foremost, that's what you need to do. And again, you cannot accept the answer. We'll do whatever you do. Get very specific about it because, you know, a lot of parents are like, yeah, daycare is great. They said they'd follow our lead. They get to school and the people are like, oh no, she needs a pull up on, you know, like they actually have things that they know are their law, but they haven't communicated that to you. One thing that's been coming up is like the kid's not self-initiating and they expect that at daycare, which is just ludicrous, right? You can tell them it usually takes three to eight weeks for self-initiation, but don't expect it. Like if you only have four or five days to potty train at home, your child's not going to self-initiate at daycare. They're just not. So again, double check that. Next, if your child has done well at home and then they get back to daycare, I would absolutely give it a little bit of time. I would buy the teachers a Starbucks gift card, a Target gift card, something like that, just to like, hey, I know this is extra work for you guys. I super appreciate your help with this. I super appreciate you potty training without a diaper on. That just makes the most sense to me. Thank you so much. Acknowledge their extra work and you're going to catch more flies with honey than with poop, right? (laughs) So do that and prepare them bring extra clothes, bring Ziplocs, make it super easy for these people to deal with an accident should it happen. Bring some baby wipes for the classroom. These are all like little gestures you can do just to say thank you. You know that I know I'm asking you to put in a little more effort and I really appreciate that. And it goes a long, long way. Know this, if your child, just like I said, if a child's under 24 months, it's incredibly hard to get a daycare on board. They have it set in their mind that the child is not ready, the child's not capable, and in so many cases, they're going to actively thwart you. I wish this weren't the case. I know there are fabulous daycares out there, but I run into daycares that will almost get into like a pissing match with you about who knows more about your kid, and then they end up like really actually thwarting you, whether consciously or unconsciously, so it's just not worth the fight. It is also tremendously hard if your child is the first child potty training. It just is. It's a raw deal for your kid to have to stop, pay attention to this bodily function when everybody else just gets to go in their pants as they're playing. So it's tricky. In this situation, it might be best if you have a friend in the room, you know, somebody you know, maybe you guys can potty train together. When a client comes to me and lets me know that their kid's kind of just in the middle of the population, some kids are potty trained, some kids aren't, like, great. The next thing you can do is get your kid a bathroom buddy. A peer buddy always works better. Hearing you have to go pee from a friend goes over so much smoother than you have to go pee from an adult. The next thing I would look for is does the daycare have something in place so that when your child leaves their toy or activity, they can get it back. So nothing is worse than like you leave the dump truck because you've got to go pee. You come back and this other kid's got the, the dump truck and it's like, what the hell happened to my dump truck? You know what I mean? So your kid's not stupid. They're going to figure that out and be like, I'll just pee my pants. That's better. I want to keep the dump truck. So check in with the school that they have something in place. Like you can earmark, you can put the dump truck aside, whatever the thing is. If it's a painting activity, nobody sits in their seat, that kind of thing. And then another thing is like, sometimes children just don't want to ask. I don't know why. You would think it would be more embarrassing for them to like, their pants or poop their pants, but they just are feeling shy about asking. So you can always set up something like a little index card, a laminated index card, or a little painted stone, 
something that the child can have on their person and just kind of give to the teacher as like almost like a hall pass, like a bathroom pass is like, this means I have to go. Alternately, you can teach your child to like, hey, you can tug on your teacher's sleeve or you can go touch their hand and that's the sign that you have to go to the bathroom. Some kids really love that and they just don't have to vocalize it and that can be very, very helpful. But what I would try to do before you abandon hope at daycare is I really would try to ascertain what the trouble is. Is your child having trouble releasing? Sometimes they might need to spend a little longer on the toilet. A lot of kids can't release right at first. They get up and within a minute they pee. So let the teacher, you know, if that seems to be the case, tell the teacher that the, if they don't mind, like get her off the toilet. Okay, great. Pull up her pants and then immediately say, oh, you know what? Let's just try again. You know, see if that works. Some kids, that double P works really, really well. These are just a couple of the things that come up. These would be the first line of defense that I would say to anybody struggling with daycare. I also like the idea of a little, you know, just a little card that's very, very simple. What is your child's P pattern? What is their signal? So their P pattern is what we're looking for in those early days of potty training. If they have X amount of fluid in the morning, within an hour, they'll have two P's. That's great information to share with the daycare. Some kids may not drink a lot in the morning, can go till 11 o'clock, and that's when they have their first P. Again, great information. What is their signal? Do they get very still? Do they touch their butt? Do they hold their crotch? Do they look like a deer in a headlights? Do they start to get really antsy? Those are good things that you can relay to the daycare. Again, a few lines. Don't overwhelm them with information. They've got other kids to take care of. Now, if you try to ascertain what the trouble is and you're still not finding anything, it just looks like a cluster. Daycare is getting frustrated. The reality is they may need to be diapered at daycare and that is okay. And throughout the years, I don't know why, but this is so true for so many kids. It doesn't affect potty training at home. You put the diaper on at daycare, you take the diaper off at daycare. What happens in Vegas stays in Vegas. And then you go home and the child's fine at home. And that's okay. If that has to happen, it's not the end of the world. I know you put a lot of work into this. I know it can feel like it's the end of the world, but it's not. Remember, these people take care of your child all day. You want them to be loving. You want them to not necessarily, you know, I think it's their job to help with these developmental milestones, but if they can't handle it, they don't have the capacity for whatever reason, then it's better that they just have a really great attitude towards your kid. If you get contentious about this, they may start taking it out on your kid unconsciously. And if your kid's just having accidents all the time, then they may start taking it out on that kid. They're going to get an attitude. It's human nature. It's really hard to like clean pee and poop up all the time in a day of daycare or preschool and not start to get sour about it. So just bear that in mind. It's far better to have them have a great attitude towards your child than pushing anything. Of course, we want to push a little bit and just say, you know, can you work with me for like another week so we can try to figure this out? It just depends. I get really grumpy daycares. I get super fantastic daycares. It really depends on your situation. So I would work really hard to try to troubleshoot it in the beginning. And then if if need be, you can always re-diaper at school. It's, again, not the end of the world. But it, I can't stress this enough. We Jen and I created the daycare blueprint because there's just so many things that could be happening. And it's just the best way to troubleshoot that. All right. That's all I have for today. As always, you guys, I totally appreciate you listening and I hope everything is helpful. If you like this podcast, give it a share, share it with your friends. It's awesome. Mamas help mamas. And that's great. And also listen to my Oh Crap Parenting podcast, especially this week and next week. There's some trends happening in parenting that kind of fold over into potty training. And I think it would be beneficial to kind of listen to both because, you know, obviously you should be listening to me all day because you have nothing else to do, right? (laughs) You're helpful though. (laughs) Okay, you guys, I hope you have a great day and as always, rock on.